For over a month now, we have been talking about white balancing on Canon's cameras, what they're capable of doing, what the settings mean, where to go to make adjustments. And throughout that process, I have said that I would be talking about custom white balances in a separate video and the whole process behind those. Well, that's what we're on about today. What's up everybody, I'm Jason, and welcome back this time to some tips and tricks for both the Canon EOS R5 and R5C. So we will be talking about setting custom white balances on our cameras, and that usually means photographing some kind of white balance target, such as this one over here. However, if you do not have a purpose-built white balance target, you may want to check out my last video where I looked at all kinds of different materials that you can use for white balance targets and different approaches that you can use for doing the same kind of process which included a ton of testing on some different materials as well that you might find useful to check out. Now, I don't usually run R5 and R5C videos together because I find that sometimes it gets complicated and confusing for people to keep track of what I mean by what. When I say R5 in this video, I am talking about, of course, Canon's EOS R5. I'm also talking about all of Canon's other EOS R series cameras, at least in the broad strokes. Some of the details may differ from camera to camera, but broadly they're going to behave the same way. Now this applies to both photo and video mode on these Canon photo cameras. When I also am saying R5, I am also referring to photo mode on the EOS R5C. And in fact, much of this will also apply to older Canon DSLR and even EOS M cameras as well. Now, when I say R5C, I am of course specifically speaking about the R5C's video mode. And this also applies to other Canon video or cinema cameras, or at least those running Canon's Cinema EOS OS. So cameras like the C70, the C300 Mark III, and the C500 Mark II will all work largely the same way. Now, of course, because they're all slightly different cameras, there may be, again, some differences in the way they operate or perform. So that boring stuff out of the way, let's talk about actually setting custom white balances on the EOS R5. Now, there are two ways to go about doing this. You can either use a reference image that's saved on your card and then loaded through the menu system to set a custom white balance, or you can do it live through the live view quick control menu to have it happen instantly. Now the reference image method can be used in both photo and video modes. However, the live method only works in photo mode only. Now one other complication to all of this setting of custom white balances is custom user modes. Ultimately, the R5 stores seven custom white balance settings. Now, these are not individually selectable however you want to use them. They're associated with bigger camera modes uh, and settings. So one custom white balance is shared between all of the basic exposure modes. So things like manual, shutter priority, aperture priority, program, flexible priority, all of those in both photo and video mode. So that's one custom white balance that covers all of that. There are then one more for a total of six total custom white balance saved in each of the custom user modes. So these are C1, C2, and C3 in both photo and video mode. So it's three in photo, three in video, they're all separate from each other. So that is your seven total white balance settings or custom settings on the camera. Reason that I'm pointing this out, <clears throat> if you, like me, use uh, or shoot a lot of video in one of the custom modes, because say you have a studio that has a pretty fixed setup and environment, then the custom mode that you're shooting there you will need to set the custom white balance in that mode specifically. You can't say flip over to aperture priority, do the live custom white balance procedure, and then flip back to your video mode and expect that it will be updated. It will still be using the same old custom white balance that was already set there. That takes care of kind of the camera caveats. Let's talk about what you need to think about when you're actually composing and creating your reference images. Now, of course, as with all white balance references, you have to have the reference item in the same light as your subject will be in. If it's not, you're not gonna get an accurate white balance measurement anyway. 
However, for Canon cameras, there's a couple of extra considerations with respect to exposure and composition. Now, exposure, Canon simply recommends in the manual to use the standard exposure. What this actually translates to is you want your white target to be bright enough to be in essentially the three brightest stops of the camera's exposure range. However, it cannot be so bright that it clips. So if you see blinkies in your image review, especially on that white target, that is not a usable image for your white balance or setting a custom white balance. So you have to kind of run that line, that, that line. You want it to be pretty bright, but not so bright that it clips. But then again, three stops is a pretty big exposure range. So as long as you're somewhere in that reasonably, you should be good. Now, from a compositional point of view, the official Canon position is fill the frame with the white target. In practice, that's never been the case. At least that hasn't been the case for at least 10 years, if not more. The reality on the EOS R5 is that only the center 4% or so of the image needs to be covered by your white target. And in fact, going back even to like the 5D Mark IV, this has never been, uh, it has never been necessary to fill the whole image. Now on the R5, when you do the live white balance capture process, it will actually show you the area the camera will use to make the white balance measurements. Uh, however, if you aren't aware or you don't have that feature on your camera, including if you're on a DSLR, the thing to look for is either the spot or the partial metering circles. So if your camera supports spot metering, that will be the area that the camera uses for custom white balances. If your camera uses partial metering and doesn't have a spot metering mode, then it will be the partial metering circle that you need to fill with your target. As for the reference images, they can be shot in either RAW or JPEG. RAW probably will give you a little bit better quality in the end. And you can transfer these reference images from camera to camera. So if you set the white balance or shoot a white balance reference on one camera, you can copy that from camera to camera to camera and then set multiple custom white balances using that image. Now, be aware there are some limitations to this. I'm not entirely sure what the exact range of limitations are, but it appears to require either the same model camera or potentially even the same firmware version of camera. So I did a number of tests trying white balance, moving white balance images from camera to camera. I tried taking images from my 5D Mark IV and putting them on my R5. I tried going the other way and I tried moving images from my R5 to R5C in photo mode. The only thing that worked for me was going from my R5 to another R5 I have access to. Everything else, the camera would not recognize the saved image as a white balance reference image. So even going to an R5C, which in photo mode should be running basically the same firmware as my R5, uh, it doesn't work there. So with that out of the way, let's talk about actually shooting and using your reference images. The process is pretty straightforward. Shoot your reference image. Make sure you meet the composition and exposure requirements and have it saved on your card. Once you have the reference image shot, go to the shoot three menu, custom white balance, and that will bring up a image browser of all the images that the camera can use off of your card. Simply select the white balance reference image that you want to use and hit set, and the camera will use that for the custom white balance. Now, if the camera doesn't think that it can get a proper white balance from the image that you've got selected, it will let you know. Now, the other way to do white balances on the EOS R5 is the live process. So this is done in live view at the time you're going to use or using the camera. And it's brought up by going to the quick control menu. So you hit the button with the Q with a box around it or the virtual quick control menu button. You select the white balance mode setting in the virtual uh, quick control menu. And then you change the white balance mode to custom. Now, normally at this point, you would just go about doing whatever you're doing. You've selected the custom white balance mode, but now we're then going to press the trash or delete image button on the back of the camera to enter the custom white balance setting option or mode, essentially. 
Once that's up, you will see a box in the middle of the screen that tells you what area you need to cover completely with your white reference. Frame that up, shoot the test image, and the camera will either set that as your white balance, in which case it will display a message that the white custom white balance has been set or updated. If it cannot use that image, it will display a message that it couldn't use the image and it didn't update the white balance. One thing to be aware of with the live white balance method is the camera does not save your reference white image. So if you need that image for something else, you will need to take a second shot after you set the custom white balance. You will not have one saved to work with. It just sets it and throws away the image data. So that's the R5. Let's talk about the R5C because while it's very similar, it is slightly different. To start with, the R5C doesn't have a menu-driven approach or method for setting the white balance using the camera to measure the white balance scene. You have to have a button programmed to the set white balance button function. Now, by default, this will be button 13. It's on the back of the camera next to the power switch. On top of that, there is no easy way to move custom white balances around cameras on the R5C. So where you could shoot a custom white balance image on the R5 and then copy that to another camera, uh, you can't really do that on the R5C. The closest you can get to that is to take the color temperature and color correction value, which will be displayed for the custom white balance that you're using and copy those settings to other cameras, but be in uh, bear in mind, these will not be custom white balances. These will be set in either you know, daylight, tungsten, or Kelvin. Finally, you cannot save your custom white balances. There is a transfer camera menu settings function on the camera that you can use to save the camera's menu settings either to internal flash or to a SD card. These settings do not save your custom white balance options. The camera will just reset them to default if you reset the camera or keep whatever the setting was if you reload the settings. Now, when it comes to the target, uh, your considerations are pro broadly the same with expect respect to exposure. You want it to be bright, but not clipping, etc. However, when it comes to composition, there is some differences between the R5C and the R5, and specifically the difference is how much of the screen has to be covered by your white balance target. Now in the manual, Canon says, point the camera at the gray card or white object so that it fills the center of the screen, uh, but they don't go on to tell you what they mean by the center of the screen. Now in my testing, I found that that means that the target must cover at least 25 to 30% of the middle of the screen for the camera to accurately determine the color or the white balance from it. There are, however, some conditions where you will want the target bigger, such as any in instance where you have a blue, orange, or yellow background color. That background color, if it is included in the white balance area, will cause the camera to artificially shift the white balance because it averages basically all of the pixels in that area to calculate what the custom white balance should be. Now, unfortunately, the R5C does not have a visible display of where this uh, white balance area is, so you're kind of on your own to guess for this. Now, the process of setting a custom white balance is Pretty straightforward, actually. First, you need to select one of the custom white balance modes. This is either custom A or custom B. Then point your camera at your white balance target, adjust the exposure and composition to make all, meet all the criteria, so no clipping, covers the middle of the frame, etc. And then simply push the set white balance button on the camera. By default, again, it's button 13 on the back. If you moved it, you'll press the button where you moved it to. As soon as you press the set white balance button, the color temperature and color correction will start blinging. Wait for these to stop. It should only take about a second or two. If the blinking continues for much longer than a few seconds, that means that the camera is unable to set a custom white balance based on the scene that it's looking at, and you will need to make some adjustments and retry. One other consideration is that you don't have the card, tar, card fully covering the area. So if it's very small, make sure you make the card as big as you can while still covering, or at least while still covering that central area. 
Now, one other condition you may run into on the R5C is if the color temperature doesn't turn white, but stays gray after it stops blinking. This indicates that the camera has set your custom white balance, but the color temperature that it is selected is outside of the displayable range. Now, if the image looks good, it means it set it correctly and everything's good to go. Obviously, if the image looks bad, something went wrong and you'll have to process the image uh, or readjust and process another white balance attempt. So, that is custom white balancing on both the R5 and the R5C. And that basically wraps up what has turned into a bit more than a month of videos talking about white balance. I hope if you've stuck around for all of these videos, you found out some useful information for you. If you did, uh, thanks, that's great. I hope you also found this video useful or at least interesting. If you did that, let me know by hitting the like button for this. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. Finally, if you'd like to directly support this channel and future content like this, please consider helping or hitting that thanks button. If you can, it's always appreciated. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.